Hey guys, welcome to Beer with Friends because drunk in public was already trademarked. I'm Aaron Gore, certified Cicerone and certifiably insane. Josh Hayward, proud American beer with brewpreneur and retired home brewer. And I am Stephanie Hudson, and I don't know much about beer, but I do know about branding and marketing. I have a company, a marketing company called Sweet Tea Craft Marketing. Yes. I think there's some companies that can use some help on that. For sure. So, Josh, what are we going to be drinking today? I uh, got a lineup of four beers in front of us. We got some great Sugar Creek Brewing Company beers today. Uh, Joe Vogelbacher, Navy veteran, started Sugar Creek several years ago, actually more than several years ago now, five years ago. Thank you, Ernest, my producer. But doing amazing things in Charlotte. Uh, he's recently named one of the 19 Master Cicerones. Yeah, he's one of 19 Master Cicerones in the world to give you uh, In the world. Yeah. In the world. To Absolutely give you a point incredible of, uh, honor. Comparison. I mean, they, they, this test has a lower pass rate than the New York bar. Wow. Uh, actually, the one I passed has a lower pass rate than the New York bar. The one for Master Cicerone is virtually impossible to pass. You get less than 10% of applicants are able to pass it, and they have very strict requirements for even being able to take it. So kind of a big deal, Joe. Is that the one you have to be invited to take? You, you can apply to take it, but they weed out a lot of people every year and basically tell people you're just not ready yet. So even being a qualified to take it is something that's worth putting on your resume. Wow. Being able to actually pass it. Uh, basically means you're at the top of your craft when it comes to beer. It means essentially you know more about beer than anybody other than about 18 people in the world. So there you go. Something worth pursuing. To that point, though, you can tell the care and the, the quality that he puts into his beer, and it definitely shows in, in everything at Sugar Creek, from the facility to the tap room to the beer. It's, it's absolutely incredible. So. Yeah, the space is actually beautiful. they got a bit really of a steampunk is. vibe going on, which is really cool. Oh, and I don't yeah. know what a fish attached to a hot air balloon has to do with sugar or creeks but you know it's kind of a cool image for mm -hmm. sure no doubt so what do we got we got the pilsner yeah. beer we've got a white, white ale, we pale got pale ale and, hazy and recent, re recently released hazy creeks so i do love that like three quarters of the way down they're like one is not like, like the other. other yeah about three quarters of the way down they decide they just hated bottles so yeah. uh, i think they're moving everything to cans so now. this exactly. is literally this is the same series yeah this is all from the same brewery yeah. so well yeah. i know it's the same brewery but are these like the same yeah, these are all core products for yep. them. Yeah. So yeah, they're they're yeah. definitely switching everything over to cans now. So you'll start seeing a lot of these out in the market switch on over to cans. Exactly. But, uh, not quite there. About two to yet. three weeks ago, they made the big can release. So everything is a different can and different color. So you've got well, that's good. Since a white we can't can, tell blue these can. apart at all anyway. Kind of yeah. hard to tell yeah. from back here. Yeah, they do kind of blend into each other a bit. Yeah. But you know what? I've got a feeling we're going to be able to taste uh, the difference pretty quick. What are so, we starting yeah. with? Let's dive on into the Pilsner first. Pilsner beer. Yeah, you'd really like them now. It's like a Technicolor, like a rainbow, rainbow. rainbow of cans now. Mm. They look really great. Stephanie, you're not going to comment on the fact that I'm pouring for myself first? Ooh. I mean, I think we all know. <laughs> Aaron is a selfish bastard. Thank you. Well, you know, at least I'm consistent. <laughs> mm -hmm. Cheers, guys. Cheers. I wasn't ready to sip yet, though. I'm smelling it. So it's very crackery right on the nose. Mm -hmm. I mean, you got that malt quality is pretty much Would you exactly call me? <laughs> I said cracker, not ginger. Mm. <laughs> Still. Crackery and buttery. Oh, also a real ginger note on it. No, no, I'm kidding. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, the nose smells pretty much spot on for what mm -hmm. you expect out of a Pilsner. Uh, just nice, bready, crackery, crisp with just a touch. It smells like of that buttery nose like you called out, Josh. Crispiness and then uh, a little bit of sweetness there too. Yeah, nice and clear. Very solid build. Pilsner yeah. beer. Love this. Going what in for a set, that is on the sweet side. Uh, what does a um, cracker smell like? I've say more. Have just you ever cracked open a thing of saltines? Saltines, yeah. <laughs> Salt. And it, man, I swear, like I'm like all about pilsners right now too. So this is going down just right. Like mm -hmm. there's something about a pilsner that's just perfect. And for a lot of people who are just getting into craft beer, when they think pilsner, they're thinking you know Bud Miller, Coors. Mm -hmm. None of those are Pilsners. Exactly. I know they call them Pilsners, but none of those Not are Pilsners. At all. It's what? like Taco Bell calling what they serve meat. What, it, <laughs> a what, is a, what is a Pilsner? I really don't know. So a Pilsner is... I know that it's... When I see Pilsner, I know that it's going to be lightish. Yeah. Type of lager beer. But, and that's really the thing to know. So it's and it's... A, oh, it's a type of lager. Mm -hmm. It is. So a Pilsner is a type of lager that actually comes from okay. the town of Pilsen in uh, the Czech Republic. So it was created in 1842 by a guy named Josef Grohl. 
Uh, it was really the first truly lightly colored pale lager. Uh, mm -hmm. Like before this, a pale ale would be similar to what we think of as like a pale ale now or even like a, a darker IPA. So they'd be more of like a, a burnished or a copper color. This was really one of the first ever beers to have this really nice light yellow color and really kind of revolutionize things. Because they were like, what is this? Out. Yeah. And it's, hey, it tastes amazing. And it was light in flavor. It was light in color. It came out around the same time that drinking glassware became practical for the first time. So for the first time, people actually Could cared what their beer looked like. Looked yeah. like. And because we drink with our eyes, it spread extremely I never even quickly. thought about that, that you could drink so if, it, if you didn't see it. it would yeah, be. so it, it really kind of revolutionized beer. And there's a reason that 90 plus percent of all beer consumed around the world is some variation Obvious. on Pilsner. So why Bud Miller Coors might not be Pilsners, they're definitely, definitely not Pilsners. They do descend from Pilsners. So there's a, a good reason for that. They're drinkable, they're crisp, they're easy to pair with just about anything. Mm -hmm. Good for almost any occasion. I mean, you're almost never going to go wrong if you elect exactly. to drink a Pilsner. Are these all lagers? No. no. So of these, this is the only lager. Yep. Essentially, a lager is just a different type of yeast strain. It's uh, fermented at a colder temperature yeah. than an ale. And works a little slower. So making a lager takes a lot more time conditioning in the tanks. Exactly. But they also tend to be super crisp, super clean, and tend not to have some of those fruity characteristics that a lot of Okay, so we've got lager, ale... And mixed fermentation or sour. Those yeah. are the three major three families berries. of beer. You can put it pretty much everything in those three. Beer from a, 101. From a home brewing side, it is way harder to brew a lager than it is an ale. Really? Oh, yeah. And especially you have to control the temperature. Like oh, yeah. It's it, extremely it, difficult. Especially on the home brewing side, it's really hard to achieve the, the clarity um, and, and that crispiness. You, you really have to have your, your factors really dialed in to, to make it happen. And if you ever talk to a brewer or go out drinking with brewers, if you want to find out the quality of a brewery, go straight for oh, either the, the Pilsner, the Hellas, the Kolsch. Even the blonde ale, whatever. You can't their hide anything. Beers, oh, wow. yeah, you can't hide anything. So if they screw something up, the you whole world's about gonna it. see. Like yep. it's like marching naked in the street. Like if you got a weird mole on <laughs> your butt, <laughs> everybody's gonna see the weird mole. On I your knew butt. we were going somewhere down. Some, that, somewhere somewhere yeah. this was gonna go yeah. off the rails. But yeah, no, this is good. It's definitely less hoppy than I would expect. It's almost hop more like a Helles Lager, which is German style, very similar to a Pilsner. It tends to be basically a Pilsner with a little more malt character and a little less hops. Yeah, I don't get much <clears throat> hoppiness at all. Well, now, yeah. you, can, you can help me out on this. When the, when the Pilsner beers first came out, wasn't there a rule that said a beer couldn't be called a Pilsner beer unless it came from that, that So, like town? champagne? In, in the Czech Republic, only Pilsner or Kell, which the original... Pilsner, by the way, is still around. If you've ever gotten a chance to try the beer, it's called Pilsner Urkel. Uh, Urkel is U-R-Q-U-E-L-L. -L. Not Urkel as in Steve Urkel for my <laughs> 90s, 90s kids. Which would, I guess, make what? Bud Miller Coors Stefan. Stefan Urkel. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, Pilsner Urkel uh, is the original Pilsner recipe. Uh, and that's the only one in the Czech Republic that's referred to as Pilsner, Pilsner. Because all Pilsner means is from the town of Pilsen. Nice. Uh, but for most of the rest of the world, yeah, Pilsner is so in that type of beer. Very similar to uh, how for a long time in American wine culture, champagne just meant bubbly wine, not the necessarily champagne. stuff from the Champagne region. Even though if you went to France, that was strictly enforced. Uh, and to this day, it's not a protected appellation either. Even within uh, Germany, for example, you can have German Pilsners, and they're perfectly comfortable calling them that. Yeah. Huh. So yeah, Good stuff. definitely a little on the sweeter side than I was expecting, but still refreshing. A little more full-bodied, more in the Czech tradition. But yeah, a little, little more sweeter than I'm used yeah. to for a Pilsner. Yeah, I uh, think nice bitterness is, on the back end though. It, this would go good with just about anything yep. if you want to pair it with. Anything. They're super clean and they're super light, which <laughs> makes it hard to screw up those pairings. I mean, it's hard to screw up a pairing with tap water. Very similar. <laughs> it's hard to screw up a pairing with Pilsner. They have just enough of everything to keep it interesting and keep you refreshed, but they're not so far in any given direction to where they're going to throw off the balance. The labels are super cool. They're very intricate. They're they've got some cool foil elements to it, and their logo and everything. I mean, this is it says "Ticket to Ride." It's very gives you like a whole carnival. It's a very carny kind of look. Yeah, I mean, even is. at the top, it's got like a little ticket, ticket motif. There. Ticket to Ride. I like the again. Little... Not sure how that relates to sugars. They're little freaks. well listen it says the flight we must imagine a world where clownfish can fly boats will soar through the sky and ordinary people make extraordinary beer there you go there is nothing ordinary about joe our magic begins <laughs> our magic begins with a carolinian commitment 
to brew Belgian American craft beer for our queen city and the rest of planet Earth to drink and enjoy. I love that. That's that is so a nice, nice, nice story. Nice little. And this is one of the most recent ones, too. I yep. think this is a fairly recent addition to the core lineup, and I'm always happy to see more Pilsners in the world. Yeah. When they started, they were pretty much entirely Belgian-focused, but they've broadened a little bit, as we're going to see as we work our way A response to the market, really. Honestly, yeah. I mean, these days, if you're trying to run a brewery without an IPA, good luck. Yeah, yeah. for sure. All right, next we got the up. white ale next. So I'm going to trouble you for that opener there. I'm trying to be careful. I don't want this thing to go flying. No, that's half the fun. If we wind up knocking out a know, light right? trying to open the thing. <laughs> there you go, my man. Nice. And for you. It's not a beer with friends shoot if we don't knock over a micro. Oh, we will break a piece of equipment every episode, and our producer will hate us a little more every episode. By the end of it, he's just going to black out our faces mm -hmm. of spite. So this is their white ale. White ale? Uh, you On also the, kind see of the Whitbeer beer route. route. Also, we'll see a list as Whit uh, I can't even talk. The Whitbeer beer route. This yeah. has tiny bubbles in my wine. It's also got a little bit of haze to it, which is yes. very typical of the style. Yeah, using that wheat, giving you some nice haze there. Yeah, oh, that's man, like, it just smells like orange speaking and of champagne, it looks like happiness. Ocean. Yeah, something like this you could actually use as a champagne substitute. They tend to be pretty effervescent, tend to be pretty high in carbonation. This one, this one's a little on the lighter side carbonation-wise, but still no. a lot of nice little fine, tiny bubbles. I the, mean, if you toasted with this, Are you saying this upset. is the champagne of beer? Because I beg to differ. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure we're getting a uh, cease and desist yeah. uh, in the mail as we speak. This uh, this smells amazing. Get nice notes of lemon and uh, some spices there, like almost reminiscent of clove. Yeah, yeah, a little yeah. sharp. I smell that. You should you should definitely be getting some spice notes in most wit beers. Uh, coriander is pretty typical. You also see curacao, uh, which is basically a type of that's an island. Use. It, it is, but there's these itty bitty uh, uh, oranges that come from there. And they'll actually uh, use it for the flavoring. Oh. So you see it used in a lot of liqueurs, like blue curacao. But yeah, you also see it used in a lot of wit beers. Some chamomile is also pretty typical. Whoa! That's... I taste some of that on the on on the palate. The, you mentioned the chamomile, which is always tasty. Well, the coriander is very strong on this one by comparison, and I like it. A lot of people turn their nose up at wit beer because they're familiar with Blue Moon, which, mm -hmm. for the record. I'm not a huge fan of the company that owns them, Miller Coors. A uh, couple of notes. Blue Moon's not craft beer. Don't drink it. But by the same token, it's not that bad of a beer. It's just barely one note. Right. And there are a lot of really beautiful wit beers out there. So don't turn off the whole style, very similar to Pilsner, mm -hmm. just because that one might not necessarily Lots of great ones this out there. This makes my tongue feel fuzzy. Really? Mm -hmm. The, we can't uh, get through one episode without a fuzzy tongue. Fuzzy note. <laughs> no, the, uh, you might want to have like a, a tongue doctor look at that. I don't even, who looks at the tongue? It's not your dentist, is it? Uh, what, eyes, doctor. ears, nose, and, what is it? Ears, nose, and, yeah. nose and throat doctor? Mm -hmm. What, they call yeah, them something. I don't know. There's got to be a name for it. Whoever you are, she needs help. Yeah. So the the the, 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 effervescence. The, the aromas and flavors, a lot of that's coming from the yeast on this this type of beer. So they're not actually putting... Those types of things in here. A lot of it's just byproduct of the yeast. This is an furnace. unusually flavored beer to me. This it's is not, definitely got this some has of those flavors like, you might associate more with citrus or even like savory notes, like or that like coriander. Tea. I'll give you that too, yep. especially if you got a touch like of hot like a spice tea, or tea. Something? Yeah. touch of chamomile, mm -hmm. um, even some of those clovey notes. People tend to associate more with like a uh, white tea, for example. So you'll definitely get some of that. Whitey? Uh, Wait, what, did, what did you say? Whitey? White tea. Whitey? White tea. Between this and Cracker, where's your head at? <laughs> <laughs> She's pre-offended. Yeah, she came, she came in ready for it. Probably safe around here. <laughs> yeah, but this is a good one. I actually yeah. really enjoy it. The uh, The flavors are well-balanced. They're full. Um, it, it's, it's what do you drink refreshing. this with? Uh, something like this, I would probably drink with like a uh, mixed green salad with like an orange vinaigrette or something I'm like that. I'm hungry now. Oh, that yeah, would be or, delicious or, or with this. Or some goat cheese. Uh, something to where it's really just going to comp like complement well mm -hmm. and really make everything kind of pop. Also great with fish. Uh, and Belgian beer in general, and this is a Belgian style. Whip beers are a Belgian style. Very yeast driven like Josh was saying. That's pretty typical of Belgian beer. They're also really easy to pair with foods. A lot of those spicy notes goes so well with the spicy notes you'd be seeing in food anyhow. Uh, it's another thing you really can't miss with. So kind of working your way across the line. So far, we got a pretty good uh, beer dinner going. Oh, no doubt. And they reference uh, Hogarden Belgian. Um, that is a, uh, that'd be a, another type of beer you may see in the market that would be somewhat similar to this. Your also, don't drink that because that's also not a craft beer. It's owned by Anheuser-Busch. Everything's coming Listen, out Listen, don't be judgy. No, it's no. great. I'm extremely judgy. Yeah. Everyone's not watched learning. any of our previous episodes. I know. <laughs> This but, one is 4.9 only. 
But it's yeah. like Super almost light. like can I borrow a magnifying glass to find that on here? Like there's they've got whole stories and carnival tickets and everything else, and you can and barely see the labels see do look. And this is like what similar. I wanted to find was this, and it's. Well, that. they're fulfilling their legal requirement to have it on there. This one it know, was but that's uh, four some eight, useful information. Four eight four nine. Yeah, so both very drinkable. I look. I never even found it on low that alcohol one. as well. And then it's sixteen IBUs. Yeah, so not real bitter at all, and you can get that even tasting on it. I mean, it, it's a super drinkable beer. This is a poolside beer. This is a uh, That's nice a springtime day. I don't think I would drink this the at the pool. Not with that attitude, you would. No. What do you prefer to drink at the pool? That's another question. Mm. If we turn this into a hard seltzer episode, I quit. No. <laughs> I, I'm with you on that one. It's not happening. It is fun oh, at the pool. You guys we're going to wind up doing a hard no, seltzer episode. The we will lose on this. all of our viewers. If we, if we do a hard seltzer episode... I'm bringing a spit bucket. I'm comfortable with that. Thank you. Decent compromise. <laughs> the, uh, I don't know, like the flavors in it, I, I feel like this would, like when you said mixed green salad with vinegar, I'm like, boom, that's yeah. what I want. I, this has, I think springtime This has freshness. too much going on it I, with it. I just want to have something like, I would more so have the Pilsner at, a, at the pool. Oh, that's also a fantastic pool exactly. side. And I'm guessing the, Matter of fact, I'm drink, guessing drink the next one. Drink more beer by the pool, guys. Oh, it's it's yeah. wonderful. Can't go wrong. Here's the secret. That's why canning is good. You get a Yeti thermos. You pour the beer in there. You close the top. No one can tell it's alcohol. Ooh. I do this all the time. Speak Nobody or cares. the Ozark Trail. Throw back to the last episode. Oh, yeah. For those of you who can't afford the Yeti, the Ozark Trail works just yeah, as we, good. Yeah, we, we got that trailer park version for you. <laughs> Josh <laughs> loves it. I, I, you served that one up. I had to go back oh, to that. Oh, that off-brand Patagonian. We got the off-brand Yeti. Yep. We're, we're golden, guys. There's one thing Josh <laughs> loves. It's a throwback. Exactly. We're all, we're not going back too far. We, we normally so go good. back thirty years, we, but we haven't gone back to childhood in this episode. Not yet. yet so. This Give doesn't remind you of the hot tea that your mom used to make you when you were no. a child. We didn't, we didn't have hot tea. Reminds me of the blue moons I threw back when I was in third grade. You know, I had a pregame prior to switching to liquor. He's like, we were too poor. We didn't have tea. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I was also poor. What's next? Pale ale. Yeah, next up. You're up. Oh, I have my turn. Yes, cool. ma'am. I recommend serving little... yourself first. I find no, it to be a pretty it's good so way of going. so rude. All right, what do we got? Let's see. We're what's all the drinking numbers? it at the same time. I cannot even read that. It's We've a little. Got little... lights blaring on us. All right, we've table. got uh, this one's five point two, five point two percent. This is going to be a so good Joe, bit higher make on your the IBUs. Alcohol content easier to find. Oopsies. Ooh, got a little bit of a back splatter on that. Uh, Sorry, we, that's a your... very awkward opener. To be fair, it's kind of small. Where'd you find your IBUs earlier? See what yeah, I mean? Really it's like looking for oh them. wow, that's what I'm saying. It's like forty-five a, IBUs, so considerably higher ring. than your Every last six two. Every six-pack should come with its own magnifying glass. It needs a decoder ring. To that point, also I think, great for frying uh, ants I? outside if you're a sociopath. To that point, I think it was one of the reasons why, uh, aside from the fact that canning is economically better, better for the beer, um, the the marketing and all kind of changed too. You, it, you can you can read a lot of this stuff a whole lot easier. It's a lot you know? clearer, and it just honestly gives you more space to play with. Uh, and bottles you don't typically do a yeah. whole wrap. They're on hugely bottles. identifiable now. You go in, and it's a Technicolor smorgasbord of their beer. You variety. know exactly what they have yeah. instantly. You're like, Even hey, that's Sugar Creek. You know what each one is, exactly. which I think is hugely handy. I think it's a good move for them. It's one they had been you know, kind of vacillating on for a while, so I'm glad they decided to go with that's it. a good word. Man. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm really bringing out the school This today. smells good. Cheers, guys. Cheers, Cheers you guys. Much more golden than the last two. You had the the light light golden, you had the hazy golden, and now you've got a deep gold. And this is about as light as beer got prior to something like the Pilsner. So if you want a good historical now, reference point. Now this tastes like beer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> as opposed to the first two, which we We need to save that clip. Like now this tastes like beer. It does. This is a, this is a beer beer. No doubt about it. Good, uh, good yeah. hoppy, hoppy aromas on this one. A lot of grapefruit right up front. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's really kind of the dominant note. This actually grapefruit reminds sure. me. Grapefruit and grapefruit rind. A lot of a more, a grapefruit rind, great call out. Reminds me a lot of a little less malty and a little more grapefruit forward version of Sierra Nevada Pale. Ooh, which your we favorite of all time. all know how I feel about that beer. Uh, and this is definitely one of my favorites from Sugar Creek. This was part of their original core lineup. It was really kind of the, the main non-Belgian one that they were doing from day one. Uh, I really enjoy the balance on this one. Mm -hmm. It's definitely on that citrusy side. Oh, but it's so good. This, for breakfast, would be fantastic with like a nice parfait. I mean, think of it like a grapefruit. You with know? a not parfait? It's not an atypical thing Parf to have for breakfast. <laughs> what, he's thinking like you know, grapefruit well. and yogurt. You this know? bikini body didn't make itself. <laughs> I got to eat well. 
Okay. But it does have all those grapefruit notes. It's really well balanced. It's not overly, it's actually not really bitter at all. It is less bitter even than Sierra Nevada Pale. It's it's pretty reserved in that front. Mm -hmm. That grapefruit comes through. That contributes most of the bitterness. Definitely a little bit of fruit, a lot of citrus. Nice dryness. But it doesn't lean too far in any given direction. I would never have been able to pull it, but man, that the bitterness is from grapefruit mm -hmm. rind. Yeah. Don't ask me how I know that. How do you I'm, know that? He had, he used to have to eat whole grapefruits. They couldn't waste the calories. <laughs> we, couldn't waste the, we couldn't waste the rind. No, no. No, I, I, I'll, I'll eat. I've eaten lemon rinds before, but because like the fibers in, in the rinds. Well, I don't but eat I, them, but I, I can tell you, that's what it's coming from. Occasionally, yeah. occasionally you'll get a piece of it, you know. In, in whenever what are you doing, doing with your lemons? You need those bioflavonoids. Yep. What are we... But the, what direction uh, did this take? This <laughs> the, the the bitterness here. It You're really You're a bioflavonoid. Mm -hmm. Good one. Really good one. Now the bitterness here. I, I just want to keep drinking it. Like the, there's types of bitterness in some yeah. beers. They're like, hey, take another sip. Take mm -hmm. another sip, kind of thing. You it's know? definitely You're boresome. Right. You kind of you kind of want those. Uh, additional sips because it does kind of reset your palate yeah. right as it starts lingering a bit. You're like, yeah, one more. time for another one. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. very also, good. Also, uh, what has really good colors? Beautiful. Yeah, what are we gonna snack on with this one though? I told you, the parfait. parfait. You shot down my parfait idea. <laughs> no, I'm not eating like yogurt with this. It's, yeah, it looks like we all silly. finished that one pretty quick. Yeah, yeah. I'll work on it. Come on, guys. <laughs> all right. All right, I've, I've got to jump in on How this one. How is it one. that the Cicero is the one without a drinking problem? I know, exactly. All right, this is uh, Sugar Creek Brewing Company's Hazy Creek. They're this one's brand new. Brand spanking new. I think this one came out. Um, where depends it on when this episode comes out. Depends on when this episode comes out. It's mid-March now when we're filming, but uh, this one came out probably six weeks, five, six so weeks ago. Sometime in the year 2022 after the apocalypse when this episode comes mm -hmm. out. There you uh, go. You'll know exactly when this beer did. Thank you, So Josh. I have not stopped singing the praises of this beer. It's oh, um, a serious award. Thank you. To... Uh, to the point yeah, Aaron's generous. To the point Aaron was making earlier, um, they they've kind of responded to the market in some of their offerings, and hazies are really huge right now. Wait, Josh, hazy IPAs are big right now. Oh my gosh, what? this is an absolute surprise. Yeah, to me. It, it's almost almost too big. You right guys now. are like too cool for hazy IPAs, aren't you? Oh my no. god, I can barely see through it. It's so hazy. Did you see this haze? Look, you're too it cool. It is hazy. I trans, love a hazy a hazy IPA. Translucent. Hazy IPA. <laughs> it's how, new style. We're inventing it right now. I don't know. I th wait, this is the first episode we're recording today. This, so this is only going to get worse as we go on. Six percent and thirty IBU. See how much Look, easier that is to see. see it. Yeah. Good Much job, clear. Sugar Creek. Good What's, job, Joe, for taking good, those notes. I'm sure you were listening to us too. when you did that. Be oh. kind, be thoughtful, recycle. That's nice. Yeah. yeah. That's a much shorter story. And honestly, the color on this is beautiful. It's definitely on the uh, the pale yellow side compared to even some other oh, yeah. hazies. Some I'd of them even definitely go, drift more towards orange I'd juice. even go more like straw color. Oh, now we're getting fancy. Yeah. Ooh. But no, like the body's beautiful. It looks great. It almost looks like pineapple juice. Sounds like, like unfiltered you pineapple juice. Exactly. Amazing. Smells almost like unfiltered pineapple juice <laughs> with just a touch of weed. Oh, juicy man. Fancy. That's I've, definitely got a resinous it's quality to it. Does. There's definitely some dankness to it. I'm, you can smell it's going to be juicy and not real bitter, but it's definitely got when, some dankness. When they, oh, it does smell so good. Yeah. It smells really good. When they dropped this beer, I went out of my way, threw all the kids in the car, made the trip up so to good. Sugar Creek, had to have a pour of this. I mean, and I, I was blown away. Like, really, really love this beer. And it's one of those things, too, that some of these breweries that are diving into the hazy IPAs, you definitely have breweries that specialize in hazies. Right. And they do them well. Yep. But good beer is good beer. And a lot of the same principles that go into brewing a fantastic Pilsner or a fantastic pale ale do go into brewing a fantastic hazy. Those properties go right over there with it. So it's fun to see some of these breweries really diving into it. Places like Sierra Nevada with Hazy Little Thing, fantastic beer. Mm -hmm. Firestone Walker uh, with Mind Haze, fantastic beer. And not a brewery you really associate with the style. But then you see them do it and they nail it. That's exactly how I feel yeah. on this one. I like the flavors in here. You're getting the pineapple. You're getting um, a little very, bit of resininess in there, too. It's super pineapple, but not sweet pineapple. Right. No, it Which is weird. Like, I don't know how that's dry. even possible. Yeah, Hint of, yeah uh, I can taste it in the back of the roof of my olfactory. mouth. Olfactory. Yeah. Olfactory have, have you guys ever taken, like, a powdered aspirin? This is good. Oh, yeah, like, sound, like, sound like, real old lady. No, hey, like, BC like, powder. BC powder. Like, BC powder. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, you get when you really just hop the living hell out of something. Sometimes you'll get just a touch of that BC powder quality right at the back in that's there. That's brilliant. And that's exactly what this has. It's just a side. touch of that aspirin-y kind of note. But it's not overpowering. On some of those, that just drips right into almost astringency. Mm -hmm. On this one, it's tempered. It leaves it feeling dry. It's not oversweet. 
It is not sweet. It no. looks and like everything we've said so far makes it sound like this would be You're sweet. almost tricked because yeah. you smell you it are. and you're like, I'm gonna your drink pineapple expected. juice. Yeah. And, and you drink it and you're like, wow, and... this is incredible. It's a flavorful ride. It's a flavorful ride. It's a flavorful ride <laughs> to Flavor Town. Welcome you, to and a flavor with Brooklyn <laughs> With Guy Fieri. Oh, yeah. Fieri. I'm coming for you, Guy Fieri. <laughs> I may watch your grocery games with my wife almost every night. Almost every night That's but, research uh, for your enemy. Exactly. Know thy enemy. I really hope that someday we can have Guy Fieri on here. <laughs> that would be the greatest thing ever. So this makes me want to have something to eat. I know I've been talking about pairings, but just because I think Are you that's hungry? interesting. Can we Not get really, you I know. Ernest, <laughs> go get me snack. snacks. Uh, no, this though, because of that bitterness, it makes me want to have something that like cuts something back salty? on that a little bit. I don't know. So like I actually somebody's... think like a... Uh... Like a sharp cheddar would be fantastic with this. Could oh. it just contrast completely, play into those kind of herbal notes you're getting off of this? Oh, thank you. That's perfect. A little bit of sweetness mm -hmm. or an entire glazed donut. <laughs> We're going to have to censor out Krispy Kreme no, before we get sued. <laughs> We're going to have to censor out me saying Krispy Kreme We're before saying, we get no, sued. No, we're just sharing our love for their brand. We love you, Krispy Kreme. Send yeah. us money. We'll endorse. <laughs> we have no souls. We'll sell out. So, yeah, so cheese. That's interesting. I bet you that would be... And IPAs and cheddar are one of those mixtures that sound weird on paper, but it actually pairs it goes really, well. really well. Those herbal and citrus notes go so well with the nutty, uh, kind of sharp, acid, borderline wow. acidic notes that you're getting out of like a really well-aged cream really cheddar. And I just love cheese. It's cheese. It's a real problem. I actually know somebody who does not like cheese, and what? I do not trust him. No. Is that, Scott, I'm calling you yeah. out, buddy. I was going to say, is he a human being? I mean, we would, Theoretically. I mean, if you've met him, it's iffy, but... Uh, Wow. Yeah, Scott Eddy, we're looking at you. He has two first names? Yeah, right? <laughs> that should be the first sign you shouldn't trust him. And now his poor wife is now Lisa Eddy. No oh, one wants that. Oh, man. I, um, I think this was such a good move, switching to this. You, if you saw the, the whole can lineup, I'm excited. You would, yeah. I hear it's like a Technicolor. Oh, it is. Smorgasbord. And I mean, if you look too, I mean, he's got, even some of the other notes, you can't see it from... There's like uh, a there cra there's yeah, like kraken like in the A background. kraken, yeah. It looks like You need more krakens in beer. This yes. looks like it's... Kraken open a beer. <laughs> I he's, love it. Trademark, 2020, go. Aaron Gore. He's got a baby he's got this a This has, that one, um, <laughs> it looks like somebody's grandma's wallpaper from a few, from Somebody's a got away. a twisted grandma. No, like the style of it. But then when you look close, you realize it's a kraken. And yeah. he, it's a kraken with, with a hop, hop on the, on the on top, top of, of his head. head. And some other sort of. M mildly religious. Well, there, no, you got the uh, <laughs> you got the, I don't the barley. It's, it's a Buddhist. The barley on the side. But yeah. no, it's been really cool to see how they have been and able just to take some of these modern styles. And way more clear with on. their message and yep. their. It's a whole new Sugar Creek. That's exactly right. Still not sure what Sugar or Creek has to do with any of this. It's locale. But who cares? It's a, there's is the Sugar Creek that runs through Fort Mill and. Josh, Charlotte. don't ruin this one. I'm just saying. We have it's, viewers from say? all over the world. So there's all a Sugar Creek that runs through Fort Mill and Charlotte. My daughter actually goes to. A oh, school yeah, name yeah. for the creek. I thought you said it was locale. And I'm like, well. No, the, the locale. L O C A L E. Locale. Oh. Yeah. Given all the food that we've talked about here today, I don't think locale. Nothing is, is locale. Come into play. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. But yeah, it's they've they've done a tremendous job with the marketing and, and the beer's incredible. What are they doing now? Yeah, um, I like this. What a are lot. they doing with the, the Watson thing now? Or the yeah, so they're actually Sugar Creek is actually working with IBM, working with the Watson supercomputer to use its adaptive learning mechanisms to help them make better beer. How Which is, is so that? cool. We live in the future. Yes. Let's put, like, we need the head exploding emoji right here. See, here's my issue is some people are worried about robots taking over the world. I'm worried about them taking over the world's beer supply. Ooh. Because if robots take over beer, I will sign up to be their slave. <laughs> uh, it, it's done. They won me over. I cannot fight it. I welcome our robot overlords. Robots so don't drink. Teaching. Not yet. Well, they know we do. They're controlling the supply. They drink oil. <laughs> Craft oil. <laughs> no. Artisan handcrafted oil. There you go. All right, time to rate. What do we think? Tastes a little like uh, North Sea origin. Uh, yeah, a little bit slick, uh, dark, and uh, yeah, oily. Oily, like most Stop handcrafted it. What oil. Stop it. What do you want to pick here? What's your go-to? Go ahead, my man. Yeah, so uh, I think my favorite What's lineup right now. What's your Sugar Creek Desert Island selection? Sugar Creek Desert Island selection. So I'm honestly going to say probably my favorite of the group is actually that white ale. Uh, mm. Oh, nice. I am one of the few people deep in craft beer who actually really, really loves a good wit beer. Uh, even a lot of people in the craft beer industry kind of turn their nose up to it as a style. But I think that one's just beautifully balanced, 
well done, great food beer, perfect for the warm weather that uh, we're recording this in Fort Mill, North Carol or South Carolina. Ooh, Ooh. Ooh. South Carolinians just got really mad at me. I promise I live here, guys. Yeah. Uh, but no, it gets kind of hot down here, and yeah, I think I think that's just the perfect beer for so much of the year down here. Uh, aside from that, the hazy cream is perfectly balanced. The pale ale is really well done. Um, so you've chosen all of them. I'm choosing all of them. The only one I think I probably wouldn't choose would be that Pilsner. It's just a little sweeter than I'd probably be looking for. And I wish it has had a little more of a hop note to it, especially since it's leaning on that Czech tradition. <laughs> but aside from that, the other three are all spot on really, really good. What about you, Josh? What's yours? I was going to ask you to go next, but it's all good. No. Um, We're going out of order. Yeah, I, I absolutely love the Hazy Creek. Um, I've been singing this beer's praises for weeks upon weeks. I've put it up against any other hazy in Charlotte. Quote me on it. Oh, that's a big and, statement. And, we just got letters. Quote me on Angry it. Le There's a protester outside already. Quote How me on it happen? and fight me on it. I, I'm, I'm serious. If I had to choose one right beer. Right now, we would like to thank a more artist for letting us record <laughs> on location. Try their hazies. They're delicious. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, if I was to choose one beer until the end of time, I'd go with the pale. Um, absolutely love it. Uh, the nice grapefruit notes in there. Um, just a good everyday beer. There's some days where I'm like, I don't want a hazy IPA, but I, I could drink that pale anytime. So, I kind of agree with you. I thought the same thing. I thought the the white was really interesting. Yeah. I liked what it did to my brain when I drank it. But uh, I don't see that being like a go-to for me. I think that's how I'm going to describe most beer now. I like what it does to my brain yeah. uh -huh. when I drink it. Uh huh. This is your brain. This, this is, is your, your brain, brain on, on white, white ale. ale. <laughs> <laughs> but if I was in a, if I went into Sugar Creek, I, this is probably what I would order. Nice. I'm a. You're a hazy, a hazy IPA IP. person. Anyway. I know, which is a little cliche, but that pale would go with just like anything. anything yeah. yeah. You can do anything with it. Yeah. And I think most of their stuff that I've had has been pr pretty well balanced. They're definitely one of those breweries that doesn't get quite as much love here in Charlotte, yeah. which is a shame because uh, top to bottom, there's quite a bit of good beer coming out of I should have wore my Sugar Creek hat. I feel like You I should have. Man. You knew what we were having yeah. today. Yeah. You had one job, Yeah, Josh. I've got two of those, by the way. Of course, the... Rag. Yeah. Well, I've enjoyed having beers with you guys yeah. today. You Always. Know, you know, there's only one thing better than a beer. It's a beer, a with, beer friends. with friends. One of these days, I swear, that's not going to sound forced. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in, guys. Check out future episodes on the Beer With Me Network, as well as our whole suite of shows, uh, Beer With Brewpreneur, Behind the Beer, uh, Craft Course, I think, is coming as well. Doing, yeah. You can yeah. find us all at beerwith.me. Hey, cheers, guys. <laughs>